Welcome to Bow Talks. Not the ones that fill your face, but the conversation that fills the coaching. I am Chloe, formerly known as Ville. I am your host. Today we have Mr. L.A.K. 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 What's up, guys? Lack, lack, lack. So, for the people that don't know you, because, you know, I know you. Long time friend. Long time no friend, nigga. What does L.A.K. stand for? Shit. L.A.K. Stands for me, nigga. Now I'm playing L stands for lost, A stands for angel, K stands for Kizzy. So basically, you're gonna be asking yourself, like, what you mean lost angel? Like, what you mean how you lost? So, you know how the devil was cast out of cast out of heaven? Mm -hmm. He was basically lost until he got to hell and got damn God sent him there type shit. But it's basically just uh when you know you're a good person, but sometimes you gotta do the bad thing for the right result type shit. It's just like you gotta feel your way through life. So you don't really know, you know what the destination is, but you don't really fully know how to get there, so you type shit lost until you really get to where you're going. You see what I'm saying? Okay, okay. All right, so we're going to get into the most recent album, Bo Boy. What does Bo Boy stand for? Yeah, he got that shit tatted on him. He's okay. serious about this shit. Okay. So, Bo Boy, give us like just a quick synopsis of what Bo Boy is. What does it mean to be a Bo Boy? Shit, first and foremost, I know y'all see the goddamn bow, and you gonna think back of house like I work at McDonald's a cookout or something. It don't mean back of house. It's short for Bohemia. Okay. You feel me? Short for okay. Bohemia. And Bohemia, don't cut that out. The definition, the dictionary definition is goddamn uh, socially unconventional, mm -hmm. especially when it has to do with art. So, really, I just feel like that's how I live my whole life, bro. I don't, I don't like doing shit the same exact way another nigga did it. Just like you gotta have your own individual individuality, shit. Like, so on the album you have thirteen songs. Mm -hmm. Were those thirteen songs easy to come about? Like, did you originally know that okay, yeah, I'm gonna put out these thirteen, or was some of them filler songs? Did you like every song that you put on the album, or? Alright, so first and foremost. All my projects are either gonna have 13 or seven songs from here on out. You feel me? And what's seven to 13. Um, seven is really just one, that's the number of completion. Two, I'm from the district. And if you don't know, that's district two five. Two plus five is seven. You feel me? And 13 is just, pe people say it's the number, like a, a bad luck number, but I don't know. That shit just, it shows up a lot in my life. And I feel like that shit is. It's significant in some type of way. Like sometimes I'll drop an album, bro, like twelve songs, and that shit just don't feel right. I gotta delete the whole thing. But anyway, damn, having the songs, I'm not gonna say I, I made all thirteen of those songs for Bo mm -hmm. or Bo Boy, cause I didn't. But um, when I was when I was making it, it was really just I was in the studio every day, and I would make a collection of songs. I'm like, this this go with that, this don't go with that. And, um, trying to find a relative theme. Exactly, exactly. Okay. But uh, also, I started making Bo Boy like probably a year and a half ago, no cap. But wow, you yeah. been working on this. Wow. But when people hear that, they're gonna be like, "Damn, you've been working on these thirteen songs for a year and a half." Nah, like it's a, it's a steady progression. Like, mm -hmm. like the same thirteen songs that is on it right now is not nowhere near the thirteen songs that was on it a year and a half ago. It's just. Finding my motion, finding what actually, what I resonate with, how I want to package it, stuff like that. And then once you change the packaging, you kind of got to change the content. Cause like, you know, if, if the if the packaging is light and bubbly, you don't want to make a dark and mysterious ass album type shit. So. So how is this album different from your last album, Bohemian? Bohemian? Yeah. Um. Okay. So Bohemian was more more experimental, more artsy, more like a. Uh, more out of pocket, if you know what I'm saying. Okay. I, uh, I was diving diving deeper into like different flows that I didn't usually use, different voices and right. shit. But also, on the on the on the creative side of it, it's like it was really telling a story. Like mm -hmm. the whole album is sat satire to selling your soul, bro. Like, and and it's basically just if you do that, that shit gonna end exactly how it started. It's gonna start exactly how it ended. And you sh you hear that with the first song, and in the end. Of course, like, and in the end, when everything fades away, you left with exactly what you was trying to get away from. Like, sure, that shit might have felt like it was cool to do or like it was worth it to do at the time, but in the long run, you type fuck yourself. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm.
And this one, I ain't gonna lie, this one is more like, Boat Boy is more, one, it's more aesthetically pleasing music-wise, like it's more, okay, this is what people wanna listen to type shit. And also, it's, um, it's stepping into the gang part of the yin and yang, you know? It's stepping into the bad, which I said earlier, like sometimes you gotta do bad to get good results. But on the next one, it's gonna be shedding more and more light, you feel me, than, than, than bad. But Bo Boy is the, he the dark one, I ain't gonna lie. He don't want him to be, be on all the fuck shit. But all the fuck shit he do, he got a, a reason, yeah, he, he got a, a reason behind that shit. Yeah, okay. So how does this album differentiate from your first album you ever dropped? Because I feel like, me personally, Bo Boy is an album for everybody. Like, nah, not yeah. a specific demographic mm -hmm. can listen to it. Like, you have But, but then you also have songs like Be So For Real. Mm -hmm. Then you also have other songs on there that, you know, you can turn up to, but also they all still have a different meaning. So right. how does this album differentiate from your first album? I'm going to have to ask a follow-up question because, okay. like we said, you know me personally. Yes. My first album, <laughs> <laughs> you mean that shit I was dropping in high school or goddamn uh, when I really started coming out my shell doing shows and shit? I say the first album that you start seeing attraction from. Okay. Like the biggest buzz from. That would have had to be Full Moon, right? Mm -hmm. Full Moon. Um, you dropped wow. that shit as an EP. Yeah. It, yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the difference between now and then, back then, bro, I was more so like, I was still trying to get my name out there, like, like, get people hip to what I do. So it was more like, uh, I produced damn near that whole album myself, just to show niggas I can make beats. And it was, it was more centered toward like street shit, you feel me? Like, I wasn't really in tune with myself or no spirituality. It was just, this what I'm around every day, so this what I'm gonna rap about. Um, but it was also like, I'm inclined to music too. Like my mama a music teacher, I also go to church. So it's like, it's gonna be certain elements in there where it's technical, you gonna hear some spiritual shit. But like, all in all, I was really still finding myself, bro. That's, that's all that shit was. Even down to me making the beats. Like, I'm not no fucking producer, but I didn't want, I, I didn't know I wasn't no producer until I started making beats. And it was like, I can do this, but that's not my lane. I was gonna ask you which one you like doing more. You like being the artist or you like being the producer? I like being the artist more for sure. Like, I like producing music, but like, my voice, bro. Like, I don't, for, for those who don't know me, bro, I don't like talking a lot. So like, the niggas I talk to is the niggas in this room, which is not too many type shit, and like a couple more people. And then, and, and my mic, my Newman mic, nigga, like, that's who I talk to. So when it comes to making music, like I, I really want to put my voice on that shit to really, you feel me? And that just Bro, come about. I ain't gonna lie. I, I started playing dice heavy when I stayed in my um my last crib. Mm -hmm. I would really just wake up, put some dice in my pocket, and whoever was outside, <laughs> come get this work. <laughs> like that's all. Come get. I need some money. I ain't got no money, mm -hmm. but I got some dice, nigga. Gotta, come get this work. I'm starting plays. with a dollar and it with fifty. Come on. <laughs> So my fondest memory of you, I don't know if you remember this, but in middle school, nigga, you bought some $500 Mason Jones yeah, jelly. Yeah, I do remember You was the only motherfucking 12-year-old I knew walking around in $500. Dollar Marshall. Niggas was calling them bitches moon boots, like trying to put me down. Yeah. My shoes cost money on your outfit. Yeah, Matter of fact, that's when Sauce Walk dropped. Yeah, Sauce because Walk. Because of those I'm specific moon boot yeah. shoes. No <laughs> cap. Um, but in that time frame, were you trying to like be the only person? Cause I know like you're a person that's unconventional yeah. and you kind of stick out like a sore thumb, like an <laughs> outcast. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like that's what your whole brand is about. So was that like intentional or you was just a nigga? I'm gonna say it was semi-intentional. Okay. Cause um, shit, the only reason I even knew we good. <laughs> the only reason I even knew what Margellas was was like cause of rappers and shit. Mm -hmm. But also, I knew that ain't nobody in my city or damn sure not my school knew what Margellas was. Right. So I was like, shit, I can't have some shit that ain't nobody, ain't nobody had before. And not, not only that, when niggas start like trying to roast me for it, cause that was during them, what are those days and shit like that. Like, nigga, I got the sheets, bro. Like, these are these, what are those? Nikes, you feel me? Like shit like that. So like, when I got them, it was damn near a conscious decision to be like the only nigga in my city with them shits. But I knew for a fact, like, 
somebody out there was doing it, which was also a conscious decision too, because it was like shit. Uh, kind of like being a like-minded ind individual. Like y'all gonna be attracted to the same shit. So it was like, if I wanna run in a circle with niggas wearing shit like Margellas, right. then I need to wear some Margellas. Right. Obviously it's not that like black and white or like whatever, but that's basically what it was. And I, that was a brain of a fucking middle school or ninth grader, so. It was more childish than it was it, now. I feel like it's more so on the standpoint of why would a billionaire sit at a table with a nigga that's only making a minimum wage job. Like, type shit, type shit. You, you wouldn't associate yourself with that crowd because you're not trying to be at the bottom of the barrel. Yeah, wow, to... <laughs> my bad. Yeah. I be having that conversation like damn near daily now. Like you can't expect to be special doing normal shit. You mm -hmm. feel me? Like mm -hmm. if you want to be special, do something special, nigga. Facts, facts. All right, we're gonna get to the more like controversial side. Of LAK, because it's been a lot of talk recently, okay? Damn sure has. Yeah, it has, okay? <laughs> and on your new album of, uh, blah, 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 Bo Boy, we're going to keep that blooper. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> on your new album, Bo Boy, we have a song called Peter Peace. Yes, sir. Pete the Cross. Pete, Pete the Cross. Why the fuck did I say Peter Peace? Oh, my God. Because Peter Peace come check Peter the cross. Peter Peace yeah. come check the cross. Oh. Peter Peace come check the cross, mm -hmm. okay? So this upside down cross. Also, it has VB Pack on it. Shout out VB, man. Shout out VB. What is up with this upside down cross? It's been a lot of conversation in person, on social media. Everybody wants to know. They think it's satanic. So I really want you to get your perspective across about the cross. First and foremost, it's not satanic. Okay. I'm not satanic. I believe in Satan. I believe in God. Okay. Like you can't have one without the other. But um, basically, the upside down cross, man. A lot of people think it's a satanic cross, not a satanic cross. It's the cross of Saint Peter, hence Peter Peace. You feel me? So Saint Peter, he was um, he was an apostle, disciple, whatever. Um, basically, basically he 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 ended up defying God. I'm not gonna lie. Like he was he was riding with God heavy. Like he was murking niggas for God. Like. <laughs> You, you said, you said, God not your man, yeah. Yeah, nigga, fuck you mean. Put but, that nigga uh, in a yelp. Yep. It came to, it came to be the time, bro, like, when, um, they was off in the dock. Like, mm -hmm. it was like, we got to get these fake ass Jews up out of here, like. So, basically, Jesus was like, look, twins, somebody in that room gonna, gonna fuck me over, like, three times, bro, like, for real. Deny me. Right. Yeah. And Peter was like, look, twin. That's some bullshit. <laughs> Everybody in that room rocking, you feel me? Everybody in that room rocking with you. But um, he's still going hard for God and shit. But uh, he, he did end up defying God. I can't quite remember how, but he was like, yeah, I don't, you talk about that Jesus nigga from, from Jerusalem? I don't know, twin. I don't know, twin. But the story bad right now. It get better. The upside down cross come in when all them niggas are getting crucified, you feel me? Um. They had Jesus, Jesus and Peter had patched it up. They had got back type cool. But when they getting crucified, Peter like, yo, nigga who, who finna kill us and shit, yo, spin me upside down, gang. Like, crucify me upside down, cause I did some flaw ass shit. Like, he didn't feel worthy. Yeah, he didn't yeah. feel worthy to die like Jesus. Like, he was like, Jesus way too player for me to die just like him. So like, go ahead and spin mine, cause I don't, I don't deserve to die like that. So basically, to me, the upside down cross is just, it's, it's, it's a form to tell you to take accountability for one, and two, a reminder that like, your closest friend can be your worst enemy, but like, you, you, you gotta rock at the same time, like, shit, as, as long as you taking accountability, this shit gonna go cool, bro, like, to be accountable for yourself, put the work forward, and goddamn, just, just don't try to hold niggas, bro, like, and don't hold yourself, if you did that shit, you did that shit, if you did, like, LAK is not satanic. Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, main point. Main point. LAK, LAK is, not, is not satanic. I believe in shit. I pray, twin. I pray. I didn't used to pray. Hell, I might have used to said I was never mind. But <laughs> but I pray, twin. I am not satanic, bro. Like. So how do you feel about people's reaction to the upside down cross and people thinking that you're satanic? Like, how do you take that? Controversy, like, do you just take it on the chin, or you just be like, I'm just let people yeah. think what they want to believe. Of course, the only thing, like, always, all you can do is take it on the chin for real. But my reaction to their reaction is just, 
I don't know. I always sit back and peep, but it's like the only time I really have qualms with anybody's opinion is is if you got the opinion and you voice the opinion without any any prior like you ain't, you ain't look for nothing. You ain't look for no answers. You ain't asking nigga like uh you can think what you want to think. I don't really give a fuck, but as long as as long as I know that I'm voicing my concerns about the 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 topic and I know that I'm putting out my meaning towards it and like and I'm not spewing no nonsense like this shit you can actually go research like I'm not just pulling something out of my ass and like look here's a religion and this is what actually not nah, like as long as it's not none of that everything is factual and genuine come, coming from a real place then I can't fuck nobody for what they think we talked about earlier you being a fashionable person if you could base your fashion off of one music artist besides yourself who would it be? It gotta be one. It can be, it can be a couple. Pharrell and Lil Uzi when he was still in the hood. Okay. Backpack Uzi. Yeah. Like, true, true jeans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. I got you. <laughs> but like, but I don't like no true, true religion jeans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wear some true religion shoes, which is weird, but. Straight on them jeans, twin. <laughs> true religions and Robins, bro. I'm not fucking with true religion and Robin jeans. Them shit's. I'm not even gonna say they played out, cause like, I don't know. Them suck. Them <laughs> shit suck. Now, uh, what is upcoming for LA Kenzie? You just dropped the album. You are on this wave right now, filling out the album. What's next? Um, more videos, more what? Shit. Okay, so of course for the album, we having videos to We shoot like five videos to the album, okay. so y'all better go tune in. Tune and while I'm here, go stream Oh Boy Fuck. Yes. Like, why you ain't did that yet? Yes. But after that, save it on every fucking platform. Every platform. SoundCloud, Spotify, yes. Apple Music, yes. Tidal, yes. motherfucking Amazon Music, motherfucking Amazon Prime, motherfucking Nigga, music, your grandma's record player. Fucking like, Audio Mac. Audio Mac. Spinrilla. All that shit. <laughs> All that shit. All that shit. But shit, after that, man, I got a deluxe coming. Okay. Uh, a Bolux, actually. I got a Bolux coming. And then... I love how you're keeping everything in the Bo brand. God. And then um, I'm dropping this rock album called Boschwillig, which means malintent in Russian. I mean, excuse me, German. And okay. if you know what, like, malintent, that was, like, my EP that I dropped after. You, you feel me? All this shit coming full circle. But um, I'm not giving y'all no release dates on that. Just suck my dick. Well, you just have to wait and see, baby. Nigga. <laughs> all right, thank you, Mr. LAK. No doubt. I love you, nigga. Actually, hey, for all my Bo Associates out here. He left me hanging. Oh, nah, we can go ahead and do something. <laughs> nah, but for all my Bo Associates out here, bro, we got a new handshake. It's called a Bo Associate shake, all right? So if you see me or a nigga who fuck with me, if you see me or a nigga who fuck with me, this how you need to piece them up, all right? All right, uh, we're going to do it again. High five, pinky, index, thumb, Come mm -hmm. uh. Come here, Ron. We're we going to show you with somebody else, too, okay? We, this the Bo Associate shake, you feel me? Shout out to Luke Cups, man. Get him for all your video Book needs. that nigga, man. Come on. He's talented. Book him. <laughs> Bo Associate shake, you feel me? Uh, uh. Nephew. Yeah, yeah. Bo Associate shake, man. We got to show the people, man. This, that's what it is. If you see me and you don't piece me up like this, you can't be both. what it is. We talk about culture, but this nigga right here. This nigga is the culture. He is the culture. No cap. His middle name is culture. <laughs> God's culture nephew. God's culture nephew. Yeah. Oh, shit. It's a wrap, man. Right. I'm going right. to leave her show. Thank you, Ms. LAK, for coming. <laughs> One, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, five, uh, six. Uh, seven, uh, eight, uh, nine, uh, ten. Bitch ass nigga, he can keep going. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> hey, thank y'all for tuning in. This has been Botox. We'll be back with another episode. Until then, hey. Welcome to Botox. Fuck. <laughs> go. Welcome to Botox, not the one that fills your face, but the conversation I'm that sorry. fills. Do it again. <laughs> audio. Total time. The You're even fucking me making the play. audio. Really? <laughs> you can just click resume when you're ready. Go. Welcome to Botox, 
Not the ones that fill your face, but a conversation for the culture. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Take three. Take. Where you see it?